Hello, beautiful Aquarian souls, and welcome to your 2025 tarot forecast. This is your psychic advisor, Micah, and I will be going over the energies that you can expect uh, to experience during the astrological year of 2025. Um, cool. Okay, so I go through all these technical issues with these videos, not really technical issues, more like technical wants and desires. And as I was laying out the cards for this reading, I was like, man, this is where the in-person reading really um, hits the hardest because not only would you benefit from actually seeing the cards um, and their interpretations, but I think that like my facial expressions and my mannerisms and the energies that come across me as I'm dealing the cards communicate a message as well. Um, so most of the time with like my phone call readings, like before the reading, I will meditate on your energy and any like clairvoyant visions, clairaudient audio, any, you know, clairaudient sounds that I hear or whatever, I also, um, will communicate to you. And that's kind of why I, it's part of the reason why I don't include the cards in the reading because a most people don't understand the cards um b um you know it's like all this technical stuff gotta like stop take a picture lose the message upload it or upload it after and all that other crazy stuff but anyway so i say all this to say that as i started doing this reading um i started to hear um the song hey baby by no doubt and it made me think about gwen stefani and i don't know I think she might be a Gemini, but I'll have to look at that. Um, she looks very Aquarian, like with her, you know, her, the bleach blonde hair and everything. Um, because my kind of quintessential Aquarian is like Paris Hilton, I guess. Like when I think of famous Aquarius, I think about her. Um, kind of like maybe a little bit appearing to be vapid, but um, morally conscious in one way or another, even if it's just for aesthetics. So, Hey Baby Hey, that's what, um, you know, that song. Go listen to that song and the lyrics, and they'll probably communicate a message to you as well. And so the energy that you're walking away from, so most likely the energy that you can expect to experience towards the end of 2024 and the beginning of the, um, like, fiscal calendar or whatever you want to call it, um, the traditional calendar, January, February, March of 2025, you can expect to be experiencing the energy of the chariot reversed. So this talks about like things becoming out of control, uh, talks about like car accidents. Um, mostly it, it might talk about like your website going down or your car being out of commission and that might be a whole arc for you. Um, I've been having difficulties with Wi-Fi, like, you know, uh, outages and, and things like that. And um, I know there's hurricanes every year, but I did this one series of videos, I think maybe two or three years ago, and all of the images were like these like uh, like disco ball, uh, post hurricane, post disaster kind of energy. Um, so even if you're not experiencing some type of natural disaster, you could be around people that are or have survivors, yada yada. Okay. So that's the energy that you're walking away from and the energy that you're experiencing in the month of April 2025, um, the season of Aries, we have the Page of Swords. So there's something about yourself that you haven't been looking at clearly. Like whenever I see the Page of Swords, especially upright, this is a person who's like adverting their eyes from something. So this is going on with like something with your face. This is something with your hair. Uh, that you're just like not paying attention to. Um, you know, you might discover that you're beautiful just the way you are, that you actually look younger without dyeing your hair or um, uh, whatever fancy little haircut you're trying to give yourself. It also is like a reminder that even if you feel like you are old or older, that you probably appear a lot younger than you give yourself credit for because you still appear as a page. Um, the page 
the queen and the king also are indicators of like certain clothing to me so it's like if you are a 50 year old person or a 60 year old person and i'm seeing the page of swords um it could be like you're just wearing like really short shorts or you're wearing like a skirt or you have your hair in a ponytail um and then like later towards the evening if you were to put like on like a nightgown or if you were to go out and put on a dress you would probably appear as like the queen of swords and then if you were to wear like a blazer and like pantsuit or a suit an actual suit uh you would probably come up as the king because i see it kind of like as clothing as well so april i see there's gonna be a lot of um a lot of energy around what you wear and how you present yourself and then moving right along to may so may the season of taurus 2025 uh this energy talks about what your priorities are and what you're prioritizing or most likely what you should prioritize right Okay, and I'm seeing this card here, the Knight of Wands reversed. So the Knight of, so I don't, I only see the Knight of Wands reversed here, but the Knight of Wands reversed, the Eight of Swords, which is a very Aquarian card. I don't see that here, but it carries the same message. Um, Knight of Wands reversed, Eight of Swords reversed, and the Hermit carry the same message of like withdrawing and not being as ambitious financially. So... You know, you might work in marketing, you might work in sales, you might have been pushing sales, and this is saying to be a little bit less ambitious, which as I'm a very ambitious person, that this is like kind of an annoying message, and that's why I'm like kind of like, ugh, like I received this too. So if your finances have been struggling, or if you notice in 2025 that your finances start to struggle, it's like just stop pushing as much and th let things naturally flow, and you'll see success there. It's also saying to me that like a Sagittarius might be like draining your finances or your, your money. Um, pages and knights do have the ability to be like small children or pets. Um, so that's something to think about. And um, moving right along to the month of June, we have the page of cups. So this in the, in the springtime, or at the beginning of the astrological new year in 2025, you will be interacting with a lot of people. I see that Gemini and Pi Gemini, Aries, uh, Pisces and Gemini are really good energies to be around. Maybe even like Cancers and Scorpios as well. Um, I would avoid fire signs if you can, um, like Sagittarius and Taurus. Uh, and then if you don't know people's zodiac sign, like a good way to indicate, like the way or a kind of um, what I'm seeing in this reading, like a surefire way to feel if someone has a lot of Taurian, Sagittarian, um, and even like Cancerian energy is that like uh, Taurus, Sagittarius, and Cancer, and Capricorn as well, they like to dress up like greasers, like um, from Greece in the 1950s. So, you know, you might be dealing with somebody who's, you know, draining your finances and they're not good for you. You can feel like they have like some type of like underlying hatred for you or something. And their sun sign is Aquarius or their sun sign is um, uh, Scorpio or something. And you're like, okay, so this person, they're not a Sagittarius or Taurus as described by... Uh, tarot bay but i noticed that they are either lacking in ambition or overly competitive and ambitious uh they're draining my finances and um they dress like a greaser like you know so they have like a big pompadour they dye their hair black um they got a leather jacket on skin tight pants like you know that that whole archetype so it's like you know they're not the indi the indicated sign but they have like the aesthetic so there's someone to not really to deal with. Um, if you're talking to a Gemini who's wearing a skirt or a Pisces in short shorts uh, or chubbies or whatever you call them nowadays, the five or four inch seam shorts, they're a good person to talk to. And hey, you know, Aquarius, brave new world. Like, you know, there might be a person that takes pictures of themselves in their underwear. Um, in this day and age, through Zoom meetings and Google Meet, you know, you might be talking to a lot of people with their pants off and you don't even know it or 
whatever it is. I specifically put pants on to do this reading <laughs> because I was like, I can feel like, I feel like even though you can't look at people, people can still see you. And I do know that when you're not able to look at a person's face or see the way that their lips are moving, it does alter the sound that you're hearing. So when I'm doing these videos and I'm not showing my face out of convenience and spiritual belief and practice and all that, um, words can be misunderstood. So I am trying to get captioning on my YouTube videos, which I think is probably really easy. I just haven't figured it out yet. And I do that on TikTok. So if you don't, if you can't understand me here, check out my TikTok. Um, and then also specifically the page of cups I see as shorts, like short pants, but then also shorts like uh, how you do shorts on YouTube or reels on Instagram or like I said, TikToks. And I see TikTok being more so the Ten of Swords because you sort of like death scroll it and it's like very addicting. Um, but maybe talking to this uh, page of cups will help you with social media or like actual socialization in real life because it's in your third um, third house or the Gemini house of the season of June. Season of Gemini, month of June. And then moving to the season of Cancer, um, which is July 2025, uh, we have the, um, the Eight of Wands reversed. So the Eight of Wands, um, I might have said in another reading that it is the card that I see about planetary retrogrades, usually Mercury retrograde. And I also told myself that before I finish doing these readings, and maybe this is why I had to re-record this Aquarius reading, is that I was going to find out when Mercury actually goes in retrograde and keep that in these videos so that it would be like informational. So let's look that up right now and see when Mercury's going to be in retrograde next year. Um, uh, but whether if it is or not in retrograde in July of 2025, um, you'll be experiencing feelings that feel like Mercury's in retrograde. So this Eight of Wands reverse, this Knight of Wands reverse, it says to be less ambitious. So, you know, you might have a whole stack of work to do in July. Um, you might even be looking at work right now in October of 2024 that you're going to have to continue to do in October 20 uh, or in um, July 2025. Uh so just, I guess, prepare for that. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Here we, here we go. And this is how this is, see, this is part of the magic of experiencing a live tarot reading because, so it says in 2025, Mercury will go into retrograde March 14th through April 7th. So that's the beginning of, uh, the astrological new year, sort of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely, uh, March 21st, whatever. Um, starts in Aries and ends in Pisces. So, you know, um, you might have a miscommunication with an Aries or something. This uh, Knight of Wands reverse might be in Aries. But then July 17th to August 11th, which I guess is technically Leo. Um, but, you know, Leo, Cancer. I think the sun goes into... Um, Leo, I want to say around July 20th or uh, 23rd. So it's there. We're talking about we're talking about the month of July. We're talking about the season of Cancer. But I guess the technical, more real Mercury retrograde is happening in Leo. Uh, but you know, Mercury's shadow. So like the shadow will start in July and you'll probably feel it a lot sooner than anybody else. And then uh, Mercury also goes into retrograde um, November 9th through November 29th. Is it? Maybe this is not a great resource. Let's see. But, well, whatever. Like, even if it's not a great resource, um, it seems pretty accurate to the reading. So uh, let's check one other place. I was, like, the, the crazy thing is, like, I was talking about the Knight of Wands being, talking about being less ambitious, the Eight of Wands, uh, or being less ambitious and then like the hermit card because I got the hermit card earlier and I was like do research and so now we're doing the research in the middle of your video 
Um, okay, so this is like this seems pretty pretty much the same story accurately through um, the different signs. So it's going to be happening like pretty much in between water and fire signs throughout this year, and you will be experiencing this in July. So you might have a trip, you might be planning air travel, uh, rethink it, rework it, double check everything. Mercury retrograde does not mean go hide under a rock. It just means to double check things. It means to, okay, yeah, like being less ambitious. Like, you know, you might want to go on a trip to compete with your Sagittarius friend. And as I've been seeing that 2025 is going to be like a very Sagittarian year of like higher education and travel, um, you know, it may not be in your best interest to, uh, or may not be a great thing for you to prioritize um, competing with your world traveling uh, uh, Sagittarian friend who might even be like a travel agent or something and they make their money off of travel. Um, so with this Eight of Wands reverse in the season of Cancer in your fourth house, this is like you should be spending 2025 reflecting on your emotions, your relationship with your mother, um, your mother's side of the family, looking at old photos, deleting pictures from your phone, uh, reworking things, looking at your resume, looking at your cover letter, um, looking through old messages that you sent to people, old emails, um, and you can uncover things like, uh, and I think it, it goes without saying, but like, you know, if you dig through a bunch of old papers, you'll probably find something important or something that you missed. Okay, and then so moving right along into the season of Leo in the month of August 2025, which so says astrology, uh, you know, Mercury will still be in retrograde. And I'm sure there's other retrogrades going on. Like I think like, like a Pluto retrograde in Saturn that's happening and a bunch of other stuff. But Eight of Wands talks about planetary retrogrades, usually Mercury retrograde because it talks about travel and having to turn back or um, do something twice. Okay, and then so in the month of August, we have the Hierophant here. So this could this talks about you tapping into mediumship. Um, so the month of August and the sign of Leo I see is like obstacles, but they're like sexy obstacles, you know what I mean? So it's like, you know, you want to go to college, but you can't because, you know, you're just too like love struck or... Um, not focused enough and uh i see that talking to a wise counselor whether that's a psychic advisor a therapist um trying to tap into your higher power um but then also like finding a higher power might be an obstacle i don't see any cards here that really talk about addiction but you know addiction doesn't always have to be a substance addiction can be to a feeling or an emotion and you might be addicted to being depressed or being unhappy or feeling alone or awkward um, and then talking to this Leo or Taurus person might help you with that um, it could be just like someone giving you confidence and instilling confidence in you um, it also talks about allowing yourself to believe in mediumship and that you have the ability to be guided by your higher self yourself from the future divine entities and that, that little annoying, nagging voice in your head that tells you to, you know, check your bag twice or to double check your tickets or your schedule, especially during Mercury retrograde, is the voice of your higher self, of God, your guardian angel, whatever. Um, and I think that once you're able to have guidance on that um, or you have uh, someone help you... Uh, strengthen your abilities every other aspect of your life should become a lot less difficult or more easy um i know that the word easy can be like triggering to people especially when you've had a lot of difficulties in your life um but that's my thing i'm like you know if it was like really hard to get buffalo wings at one point in time like you know you had to go spend like 40 dollars at Pizza Hut or Domino's to get them and no one else had them and you really love buffalo wings and then all of a sudden like you know the grocery store starts selling them like really good ones for like four dollars or something and you're like man like I would have really liked to have this in college like when I was struggling um, it's so good to have this now especially with like inflation 
And I sort of saw this in the um, in the Libra reading too, where it's like, man, like there are some things in the modern day and age that are more difficult than it was in the past. And there's a lot of other things that are like super simple, super easy <clears throat> that you don't even think about. Um, uh, that might make you, might you make you a little sad or angry, uh, that it is now this easy. I mean, it's like, I think in one video I said that it's like rolling a boulder up a hill just to find that the boulder belonged at the bottom of the hill. Um, so, you know, you could be doing some type of reporting every day. You could be doing some type of task every day that you're learning, um, you don't need to do. And it makes your life a lot easier. And, um... Cool. All right. So moving right along to the sixth house of health and service, the season of Virgo in the month of September, September 2025, we have the seven of pentacles. So the seven of pentacles says like what's going to help your health, what's going to help your work, what's going to ultimately help your money and your finances and also your relationships, um, because all those things are intertwined is using your time and money wisely. So what does that mean? Because, you know, you might be thinking that you are using your uh, time and money wisely. Uh, stay, stick to your goals, you know? Like, if you know that you have to spend money on transportation or spend money on shelter uh, or food, prioritize those things before anything else and you should be fine. Um, it's also like the Seven of Pentacles is this notion of, like, you not knowing your reputation. Like... I keep using this analogy of oranges, but it's like being, um, it's like growing oranges and not knowing that you're growing these like sumo oranges or these like really high end oranges that you should be like charging seven more dollars for versus what you're already doing. Um, but you don't know that because they haven't grown yet. You know what I mean? So then you see them, you're like, oh, this is the largest pumpkin in the pumpkin patch. Like I should be getting paid like six, seven times as much, you know? What I have here is gold. Uh, so, you know, you might be doing something every day, like literally performing miracles and magic, and it just goes unappreciated. Um, but you have to know that if you take that magical energy, that time and money and effort, and you're using it wisely anywhere else, um, that it would be appreciated. And I'm seeing that wise and wisdom are like really big keywords in this reading because we have the Hierophant right underneath the Seven of Pentacles. So you might have to talk to like a financial advisor or um, an occupational therapist uh, who'll help you move things along. And that I see um, in the next month, so moving right along to October 2025, the season of Libra and the house of um, love and relationships, attraction and attracting, I see the angel reversed. So you might go through a thing in August where you feel very connected to your divine higher powers and everything. And then in October, you might experience something that makes you lack faith. Um, it could be just like you were sober and you started drinking again. But the temperance card uh, as I do see it as like uh, this card about sobriety, I do see it as this card of like balance. So it's not like 100% abstaining from alcohol. It's just doing it responsibly. So I saw there's like this SNL sketch. I don't know how old it is, but and I don't even remember the actress that's in it. She's very memorable though. Um, I just can't think of her name right now. And she does this sketch where she's like, out with her friends at a bar and she's like oh i just got hired from this new job and then she gets all drunk and wrecked and like you know whatever so through this hair offense seven of pentacles and temperance card that i'm seeing here throughout the summer fall of uh 2025 it's just saying like don't do that like you know use your money and time wisely be confident if you have a great deal or a good job don't go to work all drunk um, don't go to your interview all drunk, just all that type of stuff. Uh, you, if you're going on a date with somebody, go on the date sober. Um, and then drink together. Um, you might have learned a lot from a Sagittarius or Taurus friend who's a little bit older than you, and you're learning a lot from their mistakes. Okay. Alrighty, so then moving on to November 2025 in the season of Scorpio we have the Nine of Swords reversed. 
So throughout this time period, you may have been struggling to getting an adequate amount of sleep. There might be a lot of noise pollution or light pollution around you. And in this month of November, that's ending. I also see the Nine of Swords as being like itchy and not being able to sleep from being itchy. So just like shower, I guess, before you t go to bed. Um, I also see it as being kept up all night by trying to read your natal chart or interpret astrology. So, you know, you might have got like a natal chart reading. I see the um, Wheel of Fortune here. You may have gotten a natal chart reading in the past that has you up at night. Um, kind of thinking all these like shoulda, coulda, woulda thoughts. And the thing is, I say, I just said in the Libra reading because this one didn't upload properly. So I had to like read whatever that um, you're in unconditional alignment with your success. And I'm actually seeing the world card, I think, in the same position that I saw for Libra as well. Um, it's like you're un you're in unconditional alignment for your success. So like, you know, if you have this great opportunity to be like America's next top model or whatever it is, but you're not going to therapy, you're not using your time and money wisely, uh, you're drinking all the time, you're not sleeping enough, you're still going to get your moment on the runway and in front of the cameras, um, especially like let's look at it as this happening in December um, 2025 in the season of Sagittarius. But whether if you sleep enough or not, whether if you use your money and um, money and time wisely or not, uh, whether if you double check everything during Mercury retrograde or not, you're still going to have this glowing, shining moment. It's just like, you know, if you spend all of 2025 eating donuts, you're going to have like a pot belly when you're, when you have this moment. Um, or, you know, if you're not sleeping well, you're doing, you're staying up all night drinking and drugging, you're gonna have like horrible bags under your eyes. But this moment of elevation is coming to you. It might even be a graduation from a, um, college or some type of program that you're part of. And... So it's going to be, you know, uh, you know, like, so you might want to go travel in May, but you find out that if you hold back in May, you'll be able to go on a better trip in December. Um, or you may be worried about visiting your family for the holidays. And I see that you will be able to, and you'll be feeling very confident and, 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 and in shape and in alignment and, uh, all those things. Uh, because the world card has like Leo, Aquarius, Taurus, and Scorpio depicted on it, which are like the um, the fixed signs of the zodiac, the cardinal signs of the zodiac. There's very sturdy, stable signs. Uh, they are the fixed signs because cardinal, I believe, is like uh, Libra and Aries and Capricorn and Cancer. Okay, anyway, um, so it's that. So like you know, you might even you know um, get some moments. Uh, you know, so while in November, while you're up all night reading astrology and worrying about yourself, you may do a reading for somebody, uh, that's very accurate in December that makes you feel more confident about your abilities. That makes you feel confident about being connected to your spirit guides. Um, so as I was saying that this reading was giving, Hey baby, Hey, from Gwen Stefani. Um, so you know, things that are lost in me shuffling the cards and trying to put this stuff, uh, you know, recorded and everything. Uh, it was saying to me, no doubt. So, hey, baby, hey, Gwen Stefani, but no doubt, Aquarius, have no doubts in your, do not doubt your abilities, have no doubts. So it's like, you know, you have this Sagittarius person, they're like asking you for money, they're very angry. Um, you might even owe them this money. They might be owed this money, but you don't have it. Uh, just have no doubt that it will be taken care of. And that might fill you with a lot of uh, anxiety leading up to November of 2025. But I see by December, you'll receive confirmation. So, you know, if you're just like Tony, he is a Taurus and a Sagittarius, and he's draining my money, and I already don't like him. Um... He's bothering me. He's bullying me. Uh, just be like, I have no doubt that this person and this energy will be removed from my life. Uh, and that's what you need to focus on is having no doubt. No diggity, no doubt. Okay. So then moving right along to January 2025 in the season of Capricorn, we have the um, King of Pentacles reversed. 
So this could be like uh, one of your bosses or somebody stepping down at your job. This is somebody who's like, they're literally like blocking your destiny because they're not good at business. So you might be working with somebody who thinks they know how to do everything. They might have listened to all the Gary Vanderchuk that they possibly could have, but they're just bad at business or bad at managing a business. Um, and then there could be like some type of Capricorn who we don't know, who's like controlling everything in the world and they step down because they're screwing everything up. Um, and you'll have confirmation about this in January. So this is actually January, 2026. I don't know if I said that correctly. Um, so this is way off into the future. And then, so when I, so this actually looks pretty good and I don't really see the need for affirmations per se, maybe like one really good one to say every morning and maybe a longer list of them to say at night, but just know, just know, act like, you know, just know, have no doubt that, uh, if you have like a bad manager at work, if you have a somebody, if someone's leading you into a bad direction purposely um, or trying to sabotage you in any way, uh, they will be removed by January, 2026. And then I see in the next month of February, 2026 in the season of Aquarius, happy birthday. Uh, we've got the Ten of Pentacles here. So if you've been like trying to save up and move to a better neighborhood, if you've been trying to um, make more money, if you're just trying to appear to be more wealthy, if, you want to, if you're trying to feel more wealthy, if you're trying to feel more satisfied by your own energy and your own vibration, I see that happening in February 2026. You can get some really good birthday presents. I see a lot of money, promotion, raise, everything that's fair because... In the next month of March, 2025, we have the justice card. So you might be, I always say Aquarius is, I say this, I use this analogy a lot, um, but I always say Aquarius is, we all are this way, but I think especially Aquarius is like a baby, like a cartoon baby walking through a construction site where there's all this like, you know, people trying to attack you, people trying to sabotage you, um, people trying to spread gossip and lies and rumors about you, but you're just like walking, humming a tune and feeling good because secretly, or the thing that you should have no doubt about is that life is fair. So this could be the one word affirmation that you're using, you know, you're driving to work, somebody cuts you off on the freeway, and, you know, you could go and chase them down, uh, you know, miss your exit, be late to work. Someone could have cheated on you in the past. You could just feel cheated by somebody and you could like spend every waking moment, um, you know, wishing death on them or whatever it is. But I think if you have this affirmation that life is fair, then you'll know that you don't have to be the hand of karma or the hand of fate, that karma and fate and justice will take care of it for you. Um, because they are real energies and they are real entities on this planet, which may be something that you're having difficulty accepting. Um, and I think like secretly or unbeknownst to you that life has been very fair to you. You've been very ambitious. You haven't really been lazy. You might have lost a lot of people along the way. You may have lost a lot of competitions, but it's like, what do they say? you know, uh, lose the battle and not the war. And I see that the energy that you're heading toward, so this is like, this is like the energy that you can expect for the rest of 2026, um, is that of the six of cups. So this is saying to me that you're gonna be experiencing a lot of nostalgia. Uh, there is a lot in this reading about you feeling young again, um, uh, feeling young again, being young again, you know, um, returning to your childhood home, returning to a place that you used to live. Um, and the Six of Cups also talks about your life being affected or impacted by children. So having children, being around children, being a nanny, uh, working at a school, uh, your neighbors having children, your sister having children, you having children. Um, so it just says that the rest of 2026 will be very childish. Okay, 
Alrighty, well I hope that this video has offered you some clarity and guidance of what you can expect for the upcoming year of 2025. And if you would like to book your own personal uh, tarot forecast, you can do so on my website and you can book with me, Psychic Advisor Micah. And um, we'll look at these energies. I, you know, I have other cards, I do other spreads, but I always feel like this spread answers everything that we're looking for. And then when you do these videos, you can always message me afterwards and be like, okay, well, what does that specific spread or what does that reading say about work? Like what, what if I, if you're an Aquarius and you don't have a job whatsoever, what does this reading say about work? It says the seven of pentacles. It says you have a good reputation. Um, use your time and money wisely. Uh, and then, so like, what is that? So it's like, you could even be an investor in something. So, you know, you might be like, oh, I never did anything. Uh, I don't have my own business. I don't have my own company. Um, but, you know, I gave $7,000 to my friend who's trying to start a pumpkin farm. Okay, well, now on your LinkedIn, put, like, pumpkin farm investor. Seven, $7, $700, $70, whatever it is. I'm an investor in the pumpkin patch. I'm the number one investor in Kalamazoo and pumpkin patches, you know, and then tout, tout that. Um, if you want to ask this reading about like what you can expect from love in 2026 or like where, how love is coming into your life, it says that you're financially stable. Uh, you might start driving less. Uh, you might want to speak to a water sign or speak like a water sign. And you might attract a person who is struggling to be sober. Um, and then... So if that's not like the, the energy that you want, because you are listening to this in 2024, hopefully, um, or earlier in 2025, that you can start to change your vibration and manifest somebody who has already conquered sobriety or somebody who has um, doesn't have these issues. And so that's the thing, too, because like with sobriety, you might be thinking like, OK, well, I don't I want to date someone who's never has never struggled with addiction. But struggling with addiction, I think, in the human experience, it's a lot like, almost like virginity, where it's like, okay, you might be a 40-year-old guy, and out of cleanliness and laziness or whatever, not wanting to get tested, you know, you might be like, well, I want to manifest somebody who's like a virgin, like someone who's never had sex, you know? Um, and as lovely as that might sound in your imagination, there's a bunch of like, things that come along with that like they've probably never been in a relationship they've like it's like they're almost 40 years old and they're a virgin like th there's some issues there that need healing as well so if you date somebody and they've gone through relationships before they've been cheated on before they've cheated um you know they've lived with people haven't you know lived on their own lived with lived as a couple um just have these life experiences like you know, surviving addiction and, um, you know, still battling sobriety, you won't have to worry about that happening to them later. You know, like you might meet some Pisces guy and he's like a lawyer and he has everything going on for his life and it's all silver spoon and perfect, but then he experiences one major upset or loss and then he's down on a downward spiral versus talking to someone who's like, you know, I listen to Tony Robbins. I keep myself motivated. I keep myself inspired. Uh, you know, I went through this, th you know, this addiction and blah, blah, blah. And now I am better for it. You know, I'm a phoenix rising from the ashes. Um, I mean, take, you know, it's all about your personal experience and what you want. But that's, you know, it's just kind of what I see in the reading and everything. Okay. So that's what you can expect. That's how you can get your own personal reading. And thank you so much for listening. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.